Hi to everyone. Thanks for the great introduction. I'm Danilo Di Febo. I'm talking about optimization, modeling optimization and design regarding to electronic package items. In the past, most of the package system and most of the parasitics will be found inside the package and also the package can be simulated just uh, to take into account something. In most of the cases, they just consider as a bridge between the outside connection and the chip inside. But during these few years, most of the problems will be inside the chip itself. And during the increasing of the frequency operating and also the um, functionality that we can find in our chips, uh, studying what's happening regarding signal and power integrity become a most critical part if you want to increase your performance and you want to decrease the overall dimension of your chip itself. What we can talk about these few minutes, I hope. Regarding about a short introduction about uh, the package, about what signal power integrity can be applied using CST in these cases, we discussed about a pre-layout and post-layout analysis. The most critical part can be uh, studying during the pre-layout how to uh, change or how to create the perfect route, the perfect path, the perfect connection between the chip itself using bond wire, differential pairs, um, all the true silicon vias that becoming a most important part in uh, this kind of application. And at the end of the story, we can talk about also a little part regarding to the thermal aspect regarding to the chip interfaces itself. We can talk about also the extraction of parasitic package that we can find inside because this is the most critical part that we can take into account during our uh, developing and our designing regarding our chips. Of course, package is becoming a most important part in these cases and also the package itself, also the multi-layer, the, the high frequency that can be taken into account and the, the integration that we can find inside our chips becoming a most important, the most critical part in our life. The height integration means several type of chip that we can find inside the same package. There are several techniques, there are several ways to connect two chips together, but in most of the cases using substrate through silicon vias, bond wire, is the cheapest and the easy way, but of course, this can be taken into account during our simulation, of course. But what is um, the main problems that we can find inside our chips? Most of the cases, each layers and each path and each root and each balls that we can find inside our chips introduce some kind of delay, some kind of exertion regarding the signal uh, the timing itself we need to be taken into account and also the transmission line itself generates some kind of emission inside the, PC, inside the package itself and also outside if you forget to shield our integrated. Of course, here this is just a simple workflow regarding to uh, design of a new chip. As you can see, also in a pre-layout, a post-layout analysis, we can show an electromagnetic simulation. Why we need to do this? And why we need to do this both or twice or together with pre- and post-layout? Because in a pre-layout analysis, the electromagnetic impact and all the electromagnetic <coughs> simulation are using to evaluate exactly which will be the final structures or which kind of structures we need to take into account, which are the overall dimension, which are the um, maximum number of true silicon vias that we, can, that we can use it on a net, for example, or evaluate the impact of, of how many bond wire we need to place to reduce the overall induction, for example. Also, the power integrity will be taken into account and evaluate exactly which was the best strategy and the best solution for your chip. 
of course, also in a post layout analysis, we are able to evaluate this kind of features, signal integrity, for example, the eye diagram, and also the impact of the real layout that the layout guy has designed for us. But of course, a lot of constraint between the pre-layout and post-layout analysis um, we need to take into account because in a post-layout analysis we have several constraints. The first one is the overall dimension, for example. The second one, the performance. It's just another aspect. And the third one, of course, all the connection that we have inside the chip and also outside. Of course, during both pre-layout and post-layout analysis, several simulations can be performed. And of course, the same as we're talking about the PCB, we need to take into account the signal integrity of power integrity application, the emission, of course, and all of these aspects will be covered using um, the correct approach, let me say, and also the correct tools. In these cases, we are using CST, of course, but I suggest to simulate in whatever you want. Let me start with the pre-layout analysis, why this aspect is most important. Let me go back, let me go directly to these slides. In these cases, we are trying to evaluate the best connection between all the vias, all the true silicon vias. Of course, starting from the center of the chip using some kind of nets, for example, and evaluate the impact in these cases a TDR analysis and evaluate exactly which will be the best configuration that can take into account and maintain constantly or equal the impedance between the inner part of the chip and the outer part directly to the ball, for example. In most of the cases, the matching problems is a part of all the other problems and all the other aspects. If you want to design a very high performance chip, you need to take into account also this kind of aspect. Of course, another aspect that we need to take into account is just the connection. Which kind of nets are you using? Which, are, which kind of grounding is preferred or is the best solution for our application? Of course, also this one can be studied in pre-layout analysis, it's easy. You can design, you have no constraint. There's no kind of um, constraint that coming from the overall dimension. But in these cases, you are, change, you are evaluate exactly which is the best configuration or the best connection for your application. You are not designed all the layout. You are designed and evaluate exactly only the connection between the inner part and the outer part. Of course, all the, bolt, the, all the bolts that we can found at the bottom of the chip as an impact. And we need to take care of this. As you can see, the first things that we can evaluate is just the H field, of course. And of course, also we need to take into account the current density, the surface current density in these cases. Because as you can see, um, if a night current density throw across a true silicon vias, in most of the cases, they will be generate a lot of problems related to the thermal aspect. And in these cases, it's most important thing to take care also of this. But as you can see in the graph on the left side, we can show some kind of coupling between the net on the top and the port placed on the bottom. Of course, we have a great, uh, a not perfect coupling in the low frequency region. But as you can see in the region between 40 gigahertz up to 80 gigahertz, the coupling is very high. This means the performance in this region will be decreased. And if the performance decreased, the overall performance of your chip will be decreased. There's a way to design the same structures using the same approach, but to increase the performance of this kind of chip. The answer will be yes, because using a simulation approach, for example, you are able to put some extra vias that connect the top of, of, the, of your chips to the bottom itself. And in these cases, you are able to reduce the overall coupling 
between the two ports on and increase, of course, the performance of your connection and overall the performance of your chip. This is the most important aspect. I will spend a little bit of time regarding to the pre-layout analysis because it's free. You cannot design nothing. You cannot choose anything. The material is the same material that you are using for your chip. It's not uh, complex to design the connection between them. There are a lot of macro, for example, in CST, we have some kind of macro that can take you to account and generate all the bias that you need, can take you to account the, um, the dimension of the bias. And also in these cases, you can use some kind of parameters and evaluate exactly which is the best way, the best number of the bias, the best dimension, and cover all the aspect, the electromagnetic aspect, and also the thermal part aspect. But moving across the um, signal integrity itself. Also the package and the PCB transition has an impact. As you can see at 10 gigahertz, we have some kind of radiation that coming from the nets placed on the top of your package. Of course, we need to study also this and cover also this kind of aspect and the mismatch generated by um, a not correct and not perfect placement or not perfect design of your nets, this can be generate some kind of emission because as you can see, mismatch means a bad transmission and of course generate emission outside and also coupling between all the nets. But in these cases, using the graph generated in the previous slides, as you can see, the H field at 10 gigahertz is, let me say, perfect. There's no asymmetric part. All the fields is covered and um, you, can f you can find all the fields inside the PCB. But if we're moving up to 26 gigahertz, we can find a lot of asymmetry. This asymmetry is generated exactly by a not perfect matching and not perfect match impedance between the transmission line at this, at this high frequency. This can be generate emission and of course generate a common mode. And this common mode is uh, a main important part inside your signal integrity analysis. Another aspect that can, must be covered when you are designing a new chip is the problem regarding to the gassing holes. Sometimes happened inside your chip that during the manufacturing process, a lot of gases will be generated. And if you use some continuous planes, during this kind of gases generate some kind of distortion of your metal plate. Also the nets will be uh, impacted from this kind of gases. And of course, the only thing that you can do is patternize or use some kind of holes in your continuous metal plate. But the question is, which are the minimum dimension of these holes to maintain the same performance of the continuous plane? This can be easily studied using some kind of parameterization sorry, inside, our, inside your simulation tools. And of course, using this kind of parameterization and evaluate the impact on the S parameter, for example, evaluate the impact in terms of emission, in terms of common mode generating, you are able to evaluate exactly which is the best way and the maximum aperture that you can find inside your continuous plane. Of course, another aspect that must to be covered is the connection using the bond wire. In most of the cases, you are using just one bond wire, but if you want to reduce the overall induction, and most of the cases generated by the large loop that we can find inside the chip, remember that we are talking about up to 50 gigahertz now. A best way to connect and use the bond wires evaluate exactly, for example, how many bond wires 
need to place to reduce the overall induction, the overall parasitic effect generated by long wire and large area, larger closed loop in these cases. Also here can be easily done using the simulation tools, You're also using CST. In this case, we are compared the induction that coming from using single wire, single bond wires, sorry, twice bond wire or three, ti three times bond wire that connect the chip itself to the bolts outside or to another, another pad that we can find inside the chip. And in the graph, we are able to evaluate exactly, to have an idea, an estimation about the impact of the numbers of these bond wire that you can find inside your chip. Of course, also the capacitance has an impact, but not the capacitance itself, the pad that you are using for connect your capacitance, the overall area, the overall dimension of the pad, these generate extra inductance. Extra inductance means extra capacitance to reduce it. And at the end of the story, in most of the cases, when we, when we have a bad design regarding the um, pad using to connect this kind of capacitance, in most of the cases, the capacitance itself has no great effect, has no great impact about our power integrity or signal integrity. Of course, also this, it's easily studied inside CST because if you are using some kind of parameters, you are able to perform a sweet parameters itself analysis, perform a lot of simulation just using one click and evaluate exactly which is the best way and the best connection pad that you can be used inside your chip. Of course, same story for the bond wire. I cannot spend too much work because most of us are more expert than me in this sense. But take care, take into account also this one. Use the pre-layout simulation to evaluate, it, to write all the guidelines that you need to pass to your colleague, especially to the layout guy. Oh, sorry, this is the same. Oh no, it's not the same because most ana another most important aspect is, of course, the pad that you are using to place the, the, capa the, um, the capacitance inside to reduce, for example, the power in the higher drop that you can find inside your chip. But of course, another most important aspect is the, the, the coupling analysis. Also the PCB software regarding higher drop, for example, and inside the PCB, the high level, that we can find is around, is less than one volt, for example. And study exactly, the air drop analysis is uh, one of the most important aspects. Of course, also this one can be studied. But let's move into another aspect. We are talking about to reduce the overall induction, overall the parasitic effect. And one of strategical way and most important application that, that we can find now is just to put some kind of embedded, embedded devices inside your chip. But this means to create an aperture. The aperture itself generates some kind of problems, and most of the problems are related to the emission. Non-continuous plane increase the impact on the, your crosstalk level because generate common mode. And we are able to find a good trade-off between the aperture, common mode impact, emission aspect. Of course, we are reducing the impact and the overall induction because we are put the chip inside another structures. Yes, I may agree with you. But in most of the cases, to create an aperture and reduce the overall inductance, we need to, go to find a good trade-off between them because it has a cost, it has an impact, you can change your routing inside your chip. And at the end of the story, we are up to find some kind of benefit using this kind of structures. But let me moving to the post layout analysis. 
At the end of the story, if you are lucky, we have write all of our guidelines. We are write a lot of consideration regarding the pad, how many wires, how to manage the two silicon vias, how many bond wire will be used inside your chip. And all this, all this information will be given to the layout guy. And the layout guy itself do the best as your possibility. Try to design and implement all of your suggestions, for example, and try to design the best solution that we can. But how to evaluate exactly the best solution that the layout guy has applied or used it. The only way is to perform other extra analysis. Also in these cases, we are able to import the Gerber file, for example, the PDK files, and perform other extra simulation, just to know exactly if all the implementation was done, for example, if all the requirement regarding the airdrop analysis the signal integrity analysis was respected, and of course, evaluate a little bit, some kind, let me say, the overall performance of our devices. First of all, we have decide where to place the port, because we have a full chip with a lot of micro bias. Most of the cases, we are able to merge all the micro bias, for example but remain the problem regarding to how to connect the ports. In most of the, most of the application, using to connect all the ports with to a pack sheet, thin pack sheet, that was placed on the top of your IC package. Yes, it's possible, but take into account that we are talking about 40 gigahertz application. This means the length of the port and the wire using to connect the port generate extra loop. This generate extra inductance. And we need to take into, take into account because sometimes happen it due the great distance between the pad and the metal plate using as a ground reference generate more problem than the package itself. Of course, it's possible some kind of then bending application using some kind of post-processing application to resolve this kind of phenomena. But also using a 3D simulation tool, a simple approach, just, you, just using a single net with ground bias and evaluate exactly which is the maximum length of the wire using inside your port is useful to have an idea about the connection that we, that we can be done regarding this kind of ports. Of course, same story if we have high speed net, for example. Also in these cases, the impact of the port can be taken into account. But of course, at the end of the story, we need to get some kind of package parameters. And the best way is to extract all of this kind of numbers in terms of capacitance, induction, and resistance, whatever you want, just using some kind of features inside CST. You just extract and evaluate exactly the impact, select the net, of course, and evaluate exactly which are the impact in terms of package parasitance and create some kind of files that can be used inside SPICE, for example, if you want to perform some kind of schematic simulation. But at the end of the story, we have this one. We have a chip, we have all the nets, all the wires. It's a big chip, of course, and we want to simulate all the structures. Sometimes it's not possible, because the chip itself generates a huge simulation, is very time-consuming, of course, generate a great number of mesh cells that need to perform some kind of days in terms of time simulation, simulation timing. But the first question that comes in, um, in the mind of an engineer is this, how to reduce this kind of model without to decrease the performance and without to generate the problems related to the truncation of the models? This can be another aspect that can be investigated. 
It also here will be investigated because this kind of chip is a simple chip, of course, and most of the bias, the ground bias, was located on the corner. Just on the four corners, most of the bias, the, gen the ground bias, are located there. What we have done inside CST? We have done this. We have taken the models, select some kind of nets just to evaluate the impact in terms of signal integrity, in terms of current density, surface current density, and evaluate the impact of the truncation of the models. The first model was taking just one hour of simulation, was simulated 24 ports, and we need to take into account also and uh, only the nets. One, just one reference plane, and we obtain some kind of results. Same story, including all the ground and the power planes, only the selected nets without nothing. This is the second model, and we take three hours as a simulation time. The third one, we need to take care of all the nets, all the ground and power plane, but just one corner, as you can see in the third pictures. Of course, also this take time, 10 hours, 24 ports. The last one was to take care of all of, your, all, all of the package with all the nets, all the layers, 24 ports, same story, but all the bias. Was around 11 hours as a simulation, but that was a trick. We have used four GPU, some actual acceleration token and some extra hardware to perform this kind of simulation. But what is the impact? The impact is this. The first thing that we can take into account is the surface current density. As you can see in all the simulation, the surface current density tried to flow behind the considered net. Also in all the models, especially in the first one, when we take care just the nets, one plane with one hour of as a simulation timing. This can be increase your power because you are able to perform a lot of simulation without wait 11 hours or several days to perform this because most of the cases you are able to obtain the same results, for example. Let me talk about the flip chip package. Same story. Also here, the truncation models as an impact. And we need to take care. But this kind of models is a little bit different because it's not easy to find the return path of the current. And in most of the cases, we, are, we can try if you cannot see exactly where it is. And in most of the cases, also in this one, the truncation of the models generates some kind of extra resonance that can be expected from the truncation model, but in the reality, when you take into account all the models, all the complex system, there's, there's no, this is not true. But as you can see, most of the curves that you can, put, that you can find in these pictures are there is will be a good agreement between them, except for the low frequency, where maybe this kind of peaks are generated and due only to the truncation stuff. Let's move into the signal integrity approach. Of course, the first thing is to select the net where we want to perform this kind of simulation. Also, we need to take into account the driver and the receiver, if you want. And to do this, the most simple way is to import some kind of HSPICE files or IBIS files, if you are able to use of you, if there is an IBIS file for your driver. But as you can see, if we try to excite just all the aggressors net and evaluate the impact on the receiver side, we can show, we can find exactly something around 0 0.35 microvolts, if I will, yeah, 35 millivolts, sorry. 
as a coupling between the aggressor net and the receiver net, also in these cases. But what happened if we excite all the nets simultaneously? I think this will be the worst cases that, that we have. And of course, the 35 millivolt that we can found in the last slides becoming more than 200 millivolts. We need to take into account of this because this generates some kind of distortion. In these cases, we are using a clock around uh, with, with edge rise around 50 picosecond, if I will remember, yeah. And the uh, old time is around 10 picosecond. It's a little bit fast, but not too fast. Of course, also here, we need to take into account of the partial truncation regarding the power plane that has an impact also this. In this simulation and in this graph, you are able to show exactly the impact of the um, reduced power plane compared with all the other one. In these cases, we are able to evaluate the S parameters regarding just one net, the selected net that you can find in the picture on the, on the top. Let me, here. This is the selected net. And above this net, there's no power reference. There's only a partial ground reference with some kind of slots, of slots, sorry. But which is the impact? The impact in terms of signal integrity, it can be easily shown in this kind of graph. And of course, if we can take care of all of the structures, we have more accurate analysis but increase the simulation time, and at the end of the story, we obtain the same results. Let's move to the final stage, the power integrity analysis. Same story of the PCB analysis. We need to take care. We are in the region of low voltage region and low power region. The impact of higher drop is dramatically in some, in some application. And in most of the cases, we need to take care of also of this. We are able to evaluate the impedance profile of all the chip, including all the wires, for example. Evaluate the power and the current that flow inside your true silicon vias. And of course, let me move, sorry, let me move to these slides, evaluate the overall loop inductance. And of course, it's very difficult to using uh, the decoupling analysis tools inside the chip. Most of this kind of aspect can be covered, must be covered during the pre-layout analysis. But of course, sometimes happen that inside your chip will be some kind of free space where we can put some one or at least two extra capacitance to reduce, for example, the air drop. Let's move to the impedance profile. In most of the cases, also in this graph, this is just the frequency impedance. And you, you can see several, re, uh, several type of resonance. The first one generated by the capacitance placed outside the chip. And at the end of the story, we have all the, rep, all the resonances and all the problems generated by the little capacitance that we can find inside your chip. Of course, we need to take care of this and set our impedance target and try to reach this kind of impedance profile, adding, of course, extra capacitance outside your package or changing something in your layout. This is what we have done. This is just the impedance profile that we can show inside your chip. Several different, several ports, several positions. And of course, it's possible to um, fix and set some kind of target impedance and try to reach using some extra capacitance that we can place inside your chip if you are lucky and if you have a free space. But in most of the cases, they are placed outside. A nice pictures is, is this. 
In these cases, you are showing the impedance profile on overall your planes. You are able to show exactly where is the place where you have a tightest impedance. And in most of the cases, you, can do some, you must do something if you want to avoid a height higher drop or drop voltage between two nearest voltage sources or voltage and chip itself. But, of course, at the end of the story, oh, sorry, let me go back. At the end of the story, we are trying to evaluate the impact only also of the technique used to resolve this kind of models. Several techniques will be used. Finite time domain, frequency domain, time domain solver. All of these techniques to solve the, the maximum equation inside the chip will be closed together. And, of course, we can do something others. We can compare our simulation, for example, for the measurement with the measurement. Also in these cases, using some kind of measurement regarding the S parameters, evaluate the impact of losses, for example, the coupling, the crosstalk, near end, far end crosstalk, and also the impact of the power plane and the power net itself. The first things, we are take some kind of chip, evaluate place of the port, of course, remember what we have talking about the ports and the eye test of the ports. The wire itself generates an extra loop. This can be investigated before to start. And at the end of the story, also the power nets will be investigated. In this case, the yes S parameter, in this case, the port number 17, is related to a power net. And as you can see, there's no strong resonance. We are lucky in these cases. But there are no strong resonance in this chip. Of course. We have performed a lot of simulation. We are able to evaluate the near and the far end crosstalk. But what we are interested is this. Compare our simulation with the, a measurement system, accurate measurement system. We have a lab in Prague to do this. And this is one on our improvement that we have inside CST. As you can see, there will be a good agreement between our simulation and, of course, our measurement setup that coming from uh, accurate setup also in these cases. But at the end of the story, we need to evaluate also the simultaneous switching noise. To do this, we, know we need to take into account not only the chip itself, but we need to take into account also the PCB. We need to take into account the ball grid array, we need to take care of the power supply, also the cables if you have inside your PCB. And in most of the cases, a huge simulation will be performed to evaluate exactly the impact in terms of signal integrity, for example, in terms of emission, if you want to know exactly which are the emission, for example, evaluate at three meters of distance of your devices. Also, this is possible. There are several different techniques that can be used, of course. And what we want to know is exactly this. If our I bit, I, I gigabit, in this case is two, more than two gigabit of data flow, will be correct delivered to the receiver without any kind of distortion. We are able to evaluate also the impact and what we are interested really is the eye diagram. The eye diagram that can take care all of the aspect. Take care the PCB, take care the board, take care the balls that we can use it to connect the PCB itself to the chip, also the cables if you want. And at the end of the story, this is I think the main graph that an engineer regarding signal power integrity is interested in. But remember the thermal aspect. We need to take care also of this because the thermal impact changes the material properties. And if the material property changing, 
also the signal the power integrity results changing itself. This, sorry, let me go back one slide. This nice eye diagram is evaluated at a room temperature, 25 or 20 Celsius degree. But we are sure that due, due the thermal aspect, this kind of wonderful eye diagram remain as the same, in most of the cases changing. And of course, if you are lucky, changing not too much. But in most of the cases, change dramatically if you, need to take, if you don't take care. And also the TDR response changing. Also the near field and the far field changing itself. We need to take care of this. As you can see in these slides, we are a summary of near field and far field extraction. And of course, it's up to you to decide if this was enough or not. If it is was, wasn't enough, you need to go back to the layout or perform extra simulation to uh, increase the, perf the overall performance. This is the end. We are talking about the package itself. We are talking about the impact of the parasitic package and the impact of the parasitic package and the structures itself on signal power integrity. And of course, uh, we can found several methods to extract all the parasitic effects and we need to take care inside your spy simulation, for example, or your circuit, circuit simulation. Thank you. <laughs>